Um, I want to talk a little bit uh, more about the uh, the horror that was perpetrated on black folk here in Georgia by the nomination by the Christian Demon Party of Herschel Walker. Um, there was a piece written by Karen Ataya, who is a columnist for the Washington Post, African American woman, and she talks about the experience she had watching uh, the Georgia runoff between Raphael Warnock and uh, the Trump challenger, Herschel Walker. And she was in D.C. watching this. And I, I, I know, uh, as a, uh, just as a white uh, progressive or liberal that I am, I, I know the, the tension she must have felt to a certain degree, as a black woman, obviously I couldn't experience what she was experiencing, but as a white progressive male, when the race between Walker and uh, um, uh, and Warnock kept flipping back and forth, if you remember that on election night, uh, one moment Walker was leading, the next moment Warnock was leading, and it was real white knuckler. I mean, I thought I was going to lose my shit completely. The votes kept going, they stayed close, but they kept going back and forth, back and forth. Well, this particular columnist, Karen Ataya, has written before that uh, the fact that Herschel Walker, and I've mentioned this too, was even a contender for this Senate seat. And, and let me, before I finish the sentence, let me in, inject here that this is what my good friend, sax player with the Count Basie Orchestra, Doc Saxman, who lives in Japan. This is what he pointed out in that email that was sent to me that I read verbatim uh, right after the election, I guess, or just before it, where Doc Saxman, who is an African-American, used the N-word liberally in what he wrote to me. And I, I told my audience, I said, I'm going to read this literally. So... Black folk will have to uh, uh, please offer me forgiveness for using a word that I shouldn't use, but I'm quoting what someone else wrote, a black person who has certainly full authority to use that word if he chooses. Where was I? Um, but Herschel Walker being anointed by this filthy son of a bitch Donald Trump and then the Georgia Republican Party white people hundreds of thousands of white people here in an act of pure cynicism and disrespect to black folk went along with this nomination and gave this miserable fucker 1.7 million votes here in, in, in Georgia 65 percent, 65 or 70 percent of the uh, uh, population in this state broken out racially is white. So to get 1.7 million votes, whatever the actual number was, I'm not sure, would indicate that an enormous amount of white people voted for a stereotypically ridiculous, stereotypically ridiculous in the brains of white people, a stereotypically ridiculous black man in order to say to the liberals or the Democratic Party, fuck you, we're going to vote for this guy even though we wouldn't even say howdy to him if we passed him on the street. Well, this is what Karen Ataya is talking about. How conservatives in general love to prop up black men who very easily fulfill every negative racist stereotype that white people have come up with. This is what Christian terrorists do. This is what uh, white conservatives do. So even though Walker had to deal with, if, if that's what we want to call it, I, I don't think he dealt with anything, but he had to deal with these multiple allegations of his domestic violence, his lies, his thievery, his theft. His, 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 I, I mean, it was, he was just the most ridiculous, flawed candidate, black or white, in my lifetime, ever run for a Senate seat. Um, 
you know, claiming that he was anti-abortion when the fucker got involved in two or three abortions. Uh, But basically, what he said was mostly just stupid, really stupid, asshole stuff, like that little argument he had with himself towards the end of the campaign about vampires and werewolves. Or about the bull in the field with five cows and three of them were pregnant and, ooh, that meant the bull had something going. What the fuck? I mean, seriously. Um, she wrote, Karen wrote, after Warnock's narrow victory, I saw this tweet from Don Calloway and it is spot on. Here's the tweet. Trumpism might have taken a blow in Georgia, but the GOP's racist tokenism, specifically its elevation of black men who habitually say ignorant things, remains as blatant as ever. End quote. Now, that sort of shit is deliberate. It would be as though the... uh, Democratic Party, in order to satisfy the liberal faction within the Democratic Party, would nominate and back total gibbering, gibbering white idiots, white people who made absolutely no sense, but in order to satisfy a, a bunch of crazy liberals, the Democratic Party, would go ahead and, and nominate somebody like that. Well, that's what the Christian Terrorist Party did here in Georgia. They allowed, first of all, a, a racist, anti-Semite Nazi like Donald Trump to determine who was going to be the uh, Republican candidate for the Senate. But then everybody in the Democrat, in the Republican Party here acted as though, oh, yeah, this really makes sense. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And even Brian Kemp, that racist fucker who is our governor, waited until his election was decided and then shows up at a couple of rallies where he actually hugged Herschel Walker. And, and I, I don't know Brian Kemp, but I know about him, and I know his history, especially when he was Secretary of State here, um, and, and, and what he did to eliminate the black vote, to see him hug Rach, uh, uh, Herschel Walker, to me was almost like seeing him hug a, a, a thorn bush. I, I, I mean, normally... Brian Kemp would have come within 100 yards of Herschel Walker, would have avoided him altogether. But because he was the Republican nominee for the Senate here, well, Brian Kemp, after his seat was secured to be governor again, he decided to go ahead and, and, and hug up <laughs> to Herschel Walker in a display of, of, of bullshit by our white governor here that just gave me it just hit my gag reflex. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Come on, Kemp. You're, you're such an ignorant little prick anyway, but anyway, whatever. So, this idea of uh, the Republican, uh, their racist tokenism, when they raise totally incompetent black men to um, this elevated position that they think they're going to be a real candidate... It's nothing new. Uh, Karen Ataya points out Herman Cain. Remember Herman Cain? Um, he wound up working at the same radio station I worked at 30 years ago, WSB. But Cain, wasn't he the, 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 the pizza guy who was a presidential candidate? He was going to be a challenger on the Republican side to Barack Obama in 2012. The Christian demons decided, well, we know what to do. We, we wouldn't say howdy to Herman Cain, no matter where we saw him, but let's make him our nominee to run against a different black man, Barack Obama. So Herman Cain said some of the most ridiculous shit. For example, he claimed he would take radical steps to secure the border with Mexico. 
This is what he said, quote, we're going to have a real fence. Now, remember, this is in 2012. This is before the orange vomit. Herman Cain said, quote, we're going to have a real fence, 20 feet high with barbed wire, electrified, with a sign on the other side that says, it can kill you. I mean, that was part of his campaign philosophy when he was still a viable candidate for the white terrorist party in this country, the Christian demons. And notably, Herman Cain couldn't answer basic questions on foreign policy that a candidate for president has got to know. And he regularly called U.S. Muslims extremists. And like Herschel Walker, Herman Cain had to deal with these allegations of uh, sexual impropriety, not being anti-abortion and providing uh, the money for abortions for his various girlfriends, but specifically just sexual harassment. You know, Herman Cain was that type of man who is all the time making moves on women that uh, if a woman tries to call the aggressor out on that, it, it's kind of iffy. Like, was he really being an obnoxious fuck or, or am I imagining something? It's something that women, I understand, have to deal with all the time from men that uh, have got this down to almost an art form, the sexual harassment. Well, that was, that was Herman Cain. And then, of course, there was Ben Carson. Remember him? Wound up in Trump's cabinet. Okay, yeah, he was a respected surgeon. Surgeon. He was an expert in... Uh, 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 childhood brain surgery, I think, the brain surgery for kids. But his run as a candidate on the Republican ticket for the presidency uh, was marked by his apparently endless capacity for saying stupid shit. He said that, if you remember, uh, this guy, uh, talk about somebody who was brainwashed, um, ben Carson said at one point that poverty is a state of mind. He said that the, the Joseph in the Bible, you know, Joseph with the multicolored coat or you know, another uh, ancient uh, Hebrew myth from, from the establishment of their religion, that the biblical Joseph built the Egyptian pyramids. <laughs> oh, I mean, God damn. Uh and he had a personal plan in case he were ever in an active shooter situation. This is according to Karen Isaiah, what she's written. He said, quote, not only, not only would I probably not cooperate with him, a shooter, I would not just stand there and let him shoot me. I would say, hey, guys, everybody attack him. He may shoot me, but he can't get us all. End quote. And then in her column, Karen writes, parenthetically, my head hurts just writing that. <laughs> You're right. Can you imagine? But that was Ben Carson. And he also went around claiming that he was a violent man in his youth, you know, trying to establish those... Uh, uh, bona fides that are um, absolutely necessary if you're going to run for the Christian terrorist party, and that is you got to be somebody that kicks ass and takes names. So he tried to tell everybody he was a real violent man in his youth, but the reporters who covered his campaign, checking and checking and checking, couldn't find any, uh, any verification of that at all. He was not a violent man. God damn but he made it into the Trump administration anyway. Now, let me close this little bit here by what Karen Attire wrote in her column in the Washington Post this morning. She writes, quote, As for Walker, this won't be the last time the GOP raises up a black man who lies, says dumb things, and has a history of sexual misconduct and violence, when the candidate on the opposing side is a liberal black man with a squeaky clean public persona and generally projects preparedness, intelligence, and savvy. Georgia dodged the Walker bullet, but that he came so close to winning is proof positive that the Republican Party is nowhere near done making the dumb black guy political play. 
end quote, Karen Attia, writing at the Washington Post. It was it was just horrifying here in Georgia. I, I, I mean, in in conversations with uh, white political observers and black political observers that I respect, um, observers who have been directly involved in politics here in Georgia, either in the Georgia General Assembly or working as organ- organizational people or what have you. But the consensus among those people, black and white, during this campaign was shock, horror, that somebody as grossly incompetent, um, as grossly out of touch with reality as uh, Herschel Walker, was nominated and, and touted as the candidate to be a senator against a, 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 a decent and respectable man like her, like Reverend Warnock. And, and the fact that he was, uh, that Herschel Walker was constantly promoted as a viable candidate by the Christian terrorist party was something that was just absolutely shocking, just unbelievable. Because every time Herschel Walker opened his mouth, You knew, you could just listen and understand there was absolutely nothing between his ears, nothing there, except mashed up brain tissue from all those years that he was a running back for University of Georgia, then Trump's New Jersey Generals, and then professional football. And there's nothing left up there except what white people, what white manipulators put in his head and told him to spit out of his mouth. It, it, was, it was just very discouraging to watch. When, when you are a person who is uh, aware of African American suppression in this country, the history of African Americans in this country, the efforts of African Americans to overcome this murderous fucking racism and and all the successful forward movement made in the past 40 or 50 years by black folk in this country and the challenges still facing black folk in this country and then to have this hypocritical, rotten, goddamn Republican Party, these Christian demons, put up a man like Herschel Walker? It makes your heart bleed. Uh, uh, well, it did mine. And... Again, w- w- without a doubt, most of the people in um, the political community here in Georgia with whom I have a relationship, whether they're black or white, shared that shock and horror. What? Herschel Walker? Hi, True Seekers. Mike Malloy here. You know, the Progressive Voices Network brings you commercial free commentary from today's leading progressive radio hosts and pundits like me, Mike Malloy, 24 hours a day. I'm not your typical old guy from the 80s or the 90s talk radio host, and Progressive Voices is not your typical talk radio network. It's a listener-supported nonprofit with no corporate control whatsoever over our broadcast. So hosts like me, Mike Malloy, are free to rant and scream and carry on about whatever we like. We're often controversial but we're never boring. Weeknights, 9 p.m. in the East, 6 p.m. in the West, on the Progressive Voices Network. Always progressive, always on. I'm Mike Malloy. Keep it lit.